Live from WRAL News Headquarters in Raleigh, your number one source for local news. WRAL News, coverage you can count on. I'm tracking our level one risk for severe storms late this afternoon and evening. I'll show you what time the storms will arrive where you are. Rescue crews are searching for a missing boat on Harris Lake. We're live on the scene with brand new information we received minutes before coming on the air. Also, Israel carries out a military strike inside Iran. Reaction from U.S. officials straight ahead. A line of storms this afternoon could bring wind damage to our area. You're looking live at a cloudy Roxburgh this noon hour. So glad you're with us. I'm Ken Smith. And I'm Michelle McConaughey. Jeff and Renee have the afternoon off. Thanks for joining us. Elizabeth Gardner is in the WRL Severe Weather Center with a look at where the storms are now and what time that we expect them. We have this level one risk for severe storms. It covers most of our viewing area. We're most likely to see the bulk of them in our southern counties where we could see some wind damage and some heavy rain. Here's a look at the big picture. We've I've been tracking this all morning, and it's looking a little quieter now than it was. Uh, even just a few hours ago, we had a few scattered storms producing some severe weather uh, over there in South Carolina, but that has recently fizzled out. So we'll be watching this warm front moving through and then eventually followed by the cold front to help bring us some scattered storms. Now, you'll notice here on the satellite view, we have cloudy skies from Wilmington to Fayetteville, up past Goldsboro and Raleigh and up toward uh, Roxboro. This is an area where it's going to be a lot more stable. Once we see those clouds dissipating, we'll start to see instability building in the atmosphere, bringing us a better chance for seeing some of these thunderstorms. So as we head through the afternoon, we'll continue to see skies clearing. We're seeing some sunshine in spots, but we'll continue to see clearing skies as we get through the afternoon. Then eventually, late in the afternoon, we'll begin to see some cells popping up, uh, most likely in our central and western uh, counties by 6 and 7 o'clock, and then in our eastern counties by around 8 o'clock. After that, we might see an isolated shower, but it's really going to be sometime between 5 and 8 o'clock that we'll have the best chance of some of these cells popping up that could produce some severe storms. We take a look at our, our rain chances, and again, between 5 and 6 o'clock and then 8 and 9 o'clock will be the uh, the last bit of those showers and thunderstorms coming through. With some sunshine, our temperatures are likely to climb into the low 80s, but once this whole system moves out, another one rolls in for Sunday, bringing us some rain and cooler temperatures. I'll show you that coming up. Elizabeth, thanks. Rescue crews are searching for a missing boater at Harris Lake after they were thrown from their vessel. One man has been pulled out of the water, but crews are searching for another man as we speak. WRL's Chelsea Donovan joining us live from a very active scene with new information she received from the Lake County Sheriff's Office within the last 15 minutes. Chelsea. Yeah, here's the latest, Ken, that we... Uh got confirmed just a few minutes ago. We understand that these two men were out on Harris Lake fishing and witnesses I just talked to said they heard cries for help as well as shouting just before 6 a.m. That's because authorities are now saying that those two fishermen hit a concrete piling in the water and were thrown off their boat. And of course, then that's when those witnesses called 911 for help. You can see now that there are just a myriad of uh, different authorities here on the scene. Let's show you, though, that video uh, of one of the those bold, bo boaters rather being pulled out of the water and into an ambulance. That boater is being treated for serious injuries at a nearby hospital. Now we know Wake, Nashley, and Durham County search and rescue teams all on site here on the lake. They're using several different tools. We know they're using dogs, drones in the air and underwater, and of course, of course sonar to assist in uh, these rescue efforts. We know that there are about a half a dozen boats in the water. Uh, Wake County crime scene investigators just arrived moments ago as well. Now we're still working to learn when these two men entered the boat ramp here on Harris Lake. We understand uh, that this is an area that is open 24-7, so we're not sure if they launched their boat late last night or early this morning. We also know right now that the water temperature is hovering around 64 degrees. Right now, where we're standing, we're at the Bartley Holloman Road uh, boat ramp. It's closed to the public today. Of course, this is still a very active scene, and we'll bring you the latest information on the air online as soon as we get it. Chelsea Donovan live today at Harris Lake. Chelsea, thanks. And we're following more breaking news in Durham. Police are investigating a deadly shooting on Miami Boulevard. WRL's Monica Casey is live on that scene with what she's learned so far. Monica. 
Yeah, Michelle, police say a man was shot and killed here around 10 this morning. They have not released his identity yet. Take a look at just how big this crime scene is. The caution tape is all the way to the street over here, going back behind the building. The entrances to this Subway restaurant, United Tobacco, a liquidation business, all of them completely blocked off and taped off. This is the same spot where five people were shot on New Year's Day of 2023. Broadcastify Radio Traffic said the victim in this crime was found inside the tobacco and vape shop. Now, Durham Police's mobile command unit is here on scene, still a large active scene. We can expect this area to be active with police presence for quite some time as they investigate this murder. Michelle? All right, Monica Casey live in Durham. Thanks, Monica. A Raleigh pastor is suspended after accusations of sexual misconduct were raised. WRL's Noah Klein is here in studio with what we know about the situation, Noah. Yeah, Michelle, take a look. This is Reverend Greg Moore. He's a senior pastor at Edenton Street United Methodist Church. Now, the church has said these charges against him don't involve children or any young people. A spokesperson for Edenton Street United Methodist says Moore is suspended from all clergy responsibilities and will not return to his appointment at the church when this suspension is over. The NC Conference of the United Methodist Church did release a statement about this saying, quote, based on Bishop Shelton's findings and with recommendation from the Board of Ordained Ministry Executive Committee, Reverend Greg Moore is suspended from all clergy responsibilities. Moore served at Edenton Street UMC from 2021 to 2024. That's according to the church. Michelle. All right, Noah Klein live in studio. Thanks, Noah. A Johnston County man caught recording under a woman's skirt at a Target in Greenville now faces new charges. Greenville police say Thomas Elliott is facing two additional charges for felony secret peeping at Target. Police in Winterville also charged Elliott with one count of secret peeping on Thursday. In that case, police said the crime happened at Open Door Church where Elliott was a volunteer. Officers say in all cases, the victims were adult women. In this noon hour, we're going to give you a live look at RDU International, courtesy of the WRL Camera Network, where just a short time ago, we learned a new international airline will be taking local passengers to the Southern Hemisphere. WRL's Sean Gallagher joining us from the announcement where it happened in Cary and Sean. Boy, this is a big move for the Triangle. <laughs> Yeah, that's for sure, Ken. Copa Airlines is one of the best airlines in the Americas and really the entire world. They have a hub in Panama, which will help people in our area more quickly get to Central and South America, even the Caribbean with this announcement. Now, RDU Airport Authority President Michael Languth tells me an average of 275 people fly back and forth to Central and South America in our area daily. And with the addition of Copa Airlines, that'll add a 10th international nonstop flight to the airport's bag. The hope is this will bolster an already booming RDU. The airport saw 14.6 million passengers travel through the airport last year, and Languth is predicting 7.5% more uh, in growth over this year. That's another 1.1 million passengers. All of this a benefit to the entire triangle. So it benefits the region because when companies start looking at putting their assets, you talk about the Googles, the Apples, they look at what your connectivity is, not just domestically, but also internationally. And Copa will have, uh, it looks like, four flights coming out of RDU a week, and that will start on June 21st. And I'm told that flight just under four hours, Ken. Oh, boy. The triangle making a name for itself in the aviation industry. Clive, uh, we appreciate that. Sean Gallagher reporting in Kerry. Well, the owner of Clyde Cooper's Barbecue is leaving downtown Raleigh and selling the space for nearly $3 million in November. Debbie Holt told WREL she was looking to move the 4,700-square-foot space out of downtown Raleigh because she felt downtown has been, quote, neglected. Holt says uh, the lack of parking and harassment were major factors in the decision. Clyde Cooper's was founded in 19. 1938. Israel confirms that it carried out a military strike against Iran in response to last weekend's attack that saw hundreds of drones and missiles launched at Israel. As Raf Sanchez reports, Iran is downplaying the event, saying life is carrying on as normal. For nearly a week, the world has been waiting to see how Israel would respond to that barrage of Iranian missiles and drones. This morning, we have an answer, and it does not appear, at least right now, that we are hurtling towards further escalation. Here's what we know. A source familiar with the situation tells NBC News that Israel carried out a, quote, 
limited strike inside of Iran. They spent the hours after that strike assessing the damage. It is not clear at this point whether the strike was carried out by aircraft, by missiles, or by drones. But it does seem that the target was a military base near the city of Isfahan, which is a couple of hours south of Tehran. U.S. officials say they were given at least a generalized heads up before this Israeli attack, and they are stressing that the United States did not play a role in it. U.S. forces across the Middle East on high alert in the event that Iran were to retaliate against the United States. But at this point, there is no indication that that is happening. Both Israel and Iran appearing to downplay this. Israel neither confirming nor denying that it was responsible, but it is not crowing, it is not gloating, and it is not rubbing the Iranians' face in this attack. Iranian state media downplaying this, and on state TV, they are stressing that life in Isfahan is running as normal, that the explosions people heard overnight were the sounds of Iranian air defenses going off here inside of Israel, there are no new restrictions on the civilian population, and that is an indication that, at least for now, Israel is not bracing for major retaliation. Raf Sanchez, NBC News, Tel Aviv. Just into the WRAL Live Center, a $95 billion foreign aid package that would send aid to Israel and Ukraine is a step closer to becoming a reality as we monitor the weekly press conference from House Minority Leader Hakeem Jeffries. That vote came this morning, an overwhelming bipartisan vote for a rule change that would allow them to debate these foreign aid bills. You know, Speaker Mike Johnson spoke in favor of this measure earlier this week, and it drew a lot of criticism from the right flank of the Republican Party and some questions still about whether they will move to oust Johnson. For now, at least, though, the final vote on this foreign aid package could come as early as tomorrow. All right, thanks, Brian. Coming up next at noon, marking two dark days in U.S. history. On this date, the Oklahoma City bombing 29 years ago and the school shooting at Columbine 25 years ago this year. Also, we'll recount the story of a Taco Bell manager who was in the right place at the right time to save a baby who was unresponsive. Plus, we'll take a look inside the new UNC Surgical Hospital and let you know when it'll be ready for new patients. Keep watching WRAL News over the air channel 34 and Spectrum channel 1257. Today, police in Milwaukee will resume their search for additional remains of a 19-year-old college student officers say was dismembered on, on a date. Uh, investigators believe Sade Robinson was murdered by Maxwell Anderson earlier this month. Officers arrested Anderson on April 4th, just one day after Robinson's severed leg was found on a remote beach. Additional human remains washed up in the same area where Robinson's car was found. Members of her family, along with volunteers and officers, searched the shoreline in search of additional remains. I do hope that they're able to find the rest of her remains just so that the family can have a proper burial for her and they can have some, some closure. Anderson has at least three prior convictions for domestic incidents. He's charged with first-degree intentional homicide, mutilating a corpse, and arson. Anderson is being held on a $5 million bond and is due in court Monday. Today marks a tragic day in U.S. history in two cities. In 1993, a deadly standoff ended at the Branch Davidian compound in Waco, Texas. A massive fire erupted inside the compound, destroying the structure and killing about 80 people, including some two dozen children and a leader, Secretary, uh, uh, Secretary Leader David Koresh. Two years later, a truck bomb exploded in Oklahoma City, destroying the Alfred P. Murrah Federal Building. 168 people were killed in that blast. The attack was carried out by Timothy McVeigh in response to the siege in Waco two years earlier. McVeigh was convicted of federal murder and executed in 2001. And tomorrow marks 25 years since two Colorado students murdered 12 classmates and a teacher. But the victim's family members are haunted by dark elements. The gunmen have not faded into obscurity, even through social media such as Facebook and YouTube. They didn't exist. The FBI concluded that the killers were driven by a desire for mass carnage and lasting notoriety. Remnants of the event from chat rooms and video are gaining new life on the dark web, frustrating victims who say megacorporations 
corporations are doing little to scrub the images off their platforms. Listen, it was a terrifying situation caught on video in a Taco Bell drive through in Pennsylvania with a baby's life on the line. An employee there jumped into action just in the nick of time. George Solis spoke with the relieved mom and the good Samaritan. A mother's worst nightmare caught on video. These are the heart-pounding moments Natasha Long realized her 11-week-old son was struggling to breathe while at a Taco Bell drive through just outside Philadelphia in Bucks County, Pennsylvania. I saw that he was turning blue, so I pulled him out of his car seat, and that's when I blacked out. I, I didn't know what to do. Here you see Long cradling baby Miles as she begins that desperate search for help. The tension building with each passing second. Baby Miles, who was born with a rare syndrome involving his breathing and airway, was unresponsive to his mother's touch. But the pair isn't alone for long. She was there right when I needed her. It was the wrong time, but the right place. Watch as seemingly out of nowhere, this good Samaritan rushes to her rescue. Like a guardian angel. Yes, absolutely. She, it was literally out of nowhere. I heard someone scream and then someone yelled and drive through, call 911, baby not breathing. So I threw my headset off and ran outside. The mystery woman taking charge. That's Taco Bell manager Becky Arba, who began performing life-saving CPR on the infant. What were you mm -hmm. telling Natasha to calm her down? I just kept saying, it's okay. He's fine. He's going to breathe. He's fine. He will breathe. He's totally fine. And she's like, I, I can't lose him. She didn't, thanks to Arba, who was able to get baby Miles breathing before paramedics arrived. A mama for herself, Arba said a similar experience with one of her own years ago had prepared her for a moment just like this. You don't want to be called a hero. No, Why? I'm just a mom helping a mom. I didn't do anything different from what anyone else should be doing. I knew how that was and I heard it and I felt it instantly and I had to go and help her because I knew it's painful. It's You're just so helpless as a mom when that happens. The two moms now friends and feeling forever bonded. I think I'm going to look back and be like, you know, oh my gosh, thank God Becky was there because... <laughs> And I'm going to let Miles know exactly why Becky is Aunt Becky. Safe to say that he has a friend for life? Absolutely. He might grow up to work oh and uh, talk about Listen, that was one of my most scariest moments. When Franklin was born, I was always scared to give him real food because yeah. of the fear of choking. Of choking, yeah. Yeah, oh. that was George Solis' report. Goodness. Now, baby Miles is doing a lot better. He still needs a little bit more surgery to improve his quality of life, but... Boy, Taco Bell issued a statement saying they are extremely proud of that store manager. Absolutely. My a goodness. lifesaver. Mm, Amazing. Mm, yeah. All right, let's turn now to our weather meteorologist, Elizabeth Gardner, uh, tracking some storms that we could see later on today. Now, we've been following this one for a while. We've had a level one risk for today since Wednesday. It's changed a little bit, but this is a look at where it is, mostly for our southern counties. Um, the northern and eastern portions uh, of our viewing area, not necessarily as affected as our southern counties would be, but no matter where you are, you could definitely see a potential uh, straight thunderstorm. So we're looking right now at a mix of sun and clouds. We have a deck of low cloud cover that's uh, stretching from Raleigh southward. That's bringing some stable conditions. And if we see more sunshine, it's going to destabilize the atmosphere or turn it over to a point where it would be more conducive for thunderstorms to develop. So that is likely. You can see future cast showing that there around uh, uh, two or three o'clock in the afternoon. Now, as we get closer to five and six o'clock, we'll likely see some scattered storms that pop up. Those likely to be any time between five and six o'clock and between say seven and eight o'clock and then we see those moving on out and there might be an isolated shower after that but for the most part that's uh, the timeline that we're expecting some of these storms could produce some heavy rain and some blustery winds and there may be one or two instances where we do have winds that are at or above severe criteria which is going to be about 58 miles per hour stronger that can do some damage so we'll be on the lookout for that if you have thunderstorms that start to move into your area uh, turn on the tv cat campbell is going to be tracking those storms for you here on WRAL during the afternoon. Here's a look at Saturday. Saturday is looking just fine. We're going to see uh, mostly cloudy skies in the morning with some sunshine developing during the afternoon, but uh, we're not looking at any rain. Late Saturday night, maybe after 10 or 11 o'clock, we may end up with a few isolated showers. Again, here's a look at our timeline starting between 5 and 6 p.m. and ending between 8 and 9 p.m. And so we'll see that band of showers and thunderstorms moving through the area. Um, hopefully it's not going to have an impact here at Dick's Park. You can see they are setting up for their Earth Day celebration. And that's happening this evening. So um, if you are headed out there, just make sure that uh, you have your WRL app downloaded. You can watch 
uh, for when those showers and thunderstorms are coming through. It's 70 degrees right now with some sunshine. Temperatures should climb on up into the low 80s. Looking at 83 in Raleigh, 82 in Durham, 88 in Fayetteville. But with the cloud cover this morning, our temperatures haven't been warming up that quickly. More sunshine this afternoon will help that warming process. So we'll go from 83 today to 59 on Sunday. And that's not our overnight low. I mean, that's been our low temperature for the last several days. That's going to be as warm as it gets on Sunday. That's because of a changing pattern. A front comes through, it stalls to the south of us and allows all the cool air to filter in. Plus, on Sunday, we're going to see some scattered showers that develop in the south and move northward across our area. We're going to take a closer look at that rain for Sunday coming up. Uh, but again, big changes in our temperatures. And even though we'll rebound into the 70s, we don't have any 80s in the forecast for next week and may not see that all the way through the following weekend. So it may be a while before we see 80s again. 78 for Saturday, uh, variably cloudy skies, and then increasing chances for rain on Sunday with a high of only 59. Uh, Kane's forecast for Saturday is looking great, looking uh, mostly to partly cloudy skies. Uh, game time is at 5 o'clock. Temperatures should be in the mid-70s, so if you're headed out to tailgate in the parking lot, temperatures look great for that. Sunday is really going to be pretty much an inside day, and then after that, our highs are in the 60s and 70s into next week. We have some chilly mornings in our forecast. Look at that, 44 degrees on Tuesday morning, and we'll see a number of mornings in the 40s next week. Oh, Ooh. Elizabeth, we welcome those <laughs> chilly mornings after what we've experienced. Good deal. Thank you. Well, Hyundai taking steps to protect its brand, while the automaker decided to pause ads on the social media app owned by Elon Musk. Plus, Wayfair taking a page out of Ikea's playbook by opening its first brick-and-mortar location. Find out when and where you can browse the brands in person. Apple deleting WhatsApp and threads from its app store in China. This follows an order from China's Internet Watchdog, which cited national security concerns as a reason for the removal. The apps are both owned by Meta and were already blocked in China, and neither was widely used. As of now, other popular Western social media apps like X, Facebook, Instagram, and Messenger are still available on Apple's China app store. Hyundai pausing advertising on X due to anti-Semitism. Hyundai made the decision a day after an ad from the automaker reportedly appeared next to an anti-Semitic and pro-Hitler post. The verified account posted tweets that denied the Holocaust and perpetuated anti-Semitic rhetoric. A spokesperson said the company is speaking with X directly about brand safety to ensure this issue is addressed. The head of business operations at X said the company has since suspended the account that was adjacent to the ad. Online furniture and home furnishing seller Wayfair is set to open its first ever store next month. The Boston-based store settled on a location about 25 miles north of Chicago. This is what the finished store will look like. The grand opening takes place May 23rd with exclusive deals and family-friendly activities all weekend. Besides home decor and space savers, it, uh, it all will also feature an on-site restaurant called The Porch. Pretty cool. Well, check your refrigerator. Trader Joe's is recalling organic basil from the Infinite Herbs brand because of a risk of salmonella contamination. The basil was sold in 29 states, including North Carolina. If you bought any, you're advised to return it to the store for a refund. The CDC reports at least 12 people got sick from the basil and one person was hospitalized. New this morning, we now know all the full schedule for the first round of the Stanley Cup playoffs. The NHL releasing the dates and times of all the games on 1 o'clock this morning. We already knew the game one for the Canes and the New York Islanders would start at 5 p.m. at PNC Arena tomorrow. If you need tickets, the lowest price on Ticketmaster right now is about $75. Game two will be Monday night at 7.30, also at PNC. The series will then shift to Long Island for games three and four. Those games will be played next Thursday at 730 and next Saturday afternoon at 2. Now, if Game 5 is necessary, it will be Tuesday, April 30th, back here in Raleigh. A game 6 will be in New York on Thursday, May 2nd. And if the series goes to a deciding 7th game, it will be Saturday, May 4th, right back here in Raleigh at PNC Arena. <laughs> Well, lots to share with you in the next half hour this noon hour. UNC Health welcoming the largest addition to its Chapel Hill campus in more than 70 years. We're live with a look inside the new surgical hospital. Also coming up. Stop, stop, we're 2937, stop. Two planes cleared for takeoff nearly collided Washington National Airport. Just minutes before a catastrophic crash, they were able to stop that. Now the FAA is searching for who's at fault. 
shot in 4K ultra high definition. Your number one source for local news. WRAL News. Coverage you can count on. A new surgical hospital will soon open its doors in Chapel Hill, expanding care options for patients. Yeah, construction crews have invested more than a million hours of work so far. WRL health reporter Grace Haber joins us live from Chapel Hill with our first look inside. Grace, good afternoon. Hey, good afternoon, Ken. It's no secret that the Triangle is known for medical innovation. And this new surgical hospital at the heart of UNC's main campus here in Chapel Hill is going to help expand those opportunities. The whole place has been under construction since 2019, and we're getting our first look inside today. What you're looking at right now is the lobby on the third floor. Now, the whole facility is going to have seven floors for patient care. It's also going to include dozens of operating rooms, pre- and post-op space, critical care, and observation observation beds. It means more people will receive state-of-the-art care right here. It means our people, our surgical teams, our critical care providers, our support staff will care for patients in a space truly befitting their skills and talent. The facility will employ about 500 people. 100 of those jobs will be brand new. The entire hospital is set to open for patients this July. Live in Chapel Hill, Grace Haber, WRL News. We appreciate that, Grace. Thank you for that report. It's business as usual at a post office in Zebulon following a hazard scare. It happened around 7.30 this morning at the building on Van Street. Now, a witness says a substance inside that post office made two employees dizzy and nauseous. It's unclear if anyone was seriously injured. Federal officials announced this morning new clean energy investments for 20 states, including here in North Carolina. The Department of Energy announced details for 35 new projects nationwide, totaling nearly $2 billion. Siemens Charlotte site will receive more than $18 million to boost manufacturing of transformers, key grid infrastructure. This investment will boost the U.S. supply chain and enable more resilient grid in the face of increasing demand and climate change threats. This exciting round of awards reflects this administration's deep commitment to leading the transition to clean energy and making sure that every community across our state and our country has what it needs to do it right, especially in the areas where fossil fuel jobs have been prominent for years. The Department of Energy says seven of the projects denounced today will be dedicated to those energy communities with closed coal mines and plants. An important Johnson County Bridge closure starts in a few hours. A state DOT contractor is widening the NC-42 bridge and the Cleveland Road overpass, as well as giving it new access to I-40. Crews need to close the bridge temporarily for paving. Now, when that bridge closes, the Cleveland Road interchange will open for the first time to and from I-40 below. The bridge closing is set for tonight at 9 p.m. It will reopen Monday morning, just in time for the morning commute. The I-40 ramps will remain open, though. This process will repeat next weekend. The FAA is investigating after a Boston-bound JetBlue plane and a Southwest plane almost collided in Washington, D.C. on a runway there. Both planes came to a halt approximately 400 feet apart, which is about the length of three airplanes. But as Sam Brock reports, this is just the latest in a string of airport mishaps under investigation. Stop, stop, we're 2937, stop. A frantic warning at DCA directed at a Southwest plane, which the FAA says had just received permission from controllers to cross runway four, while a JetBlue plane was beginning its takeoff roll on the very same runway. A source says the planes came within a thousand feet of each other. We stopped. We were cleared to cross runway four. And we stopped the JetBlue 1654. Teresa Hoffman was on board the JetBlue aircraft. Like you're about to like lose the ground underneath you. And like right about that, like right before that's about to happen, like we just slam on the brakes. Thankfully, a potential disaster was averted. But now there are many questions about what might have caused the mishap in the first place. It appears that you had two different airplanes talking to two different controllers, one ground controller and one a uh, tower controller. So it appears to be uh, an operational error. Hoffman also received an email from JetBlue, which stated in part, this disruption is considered an uncontrollable disruption, meaning it's due to events outside of JetBlue's control. 
The FAA saying it's going to investigate the incident, and both airlines promising to cooperate fully with the federal government. Even as the FAA says runway incursions have dropped, a string of recent close calls have raised significant concerns. Southwest aboard. Like a landing FedEx cargo plane last winter, coming within 100 feet of a Southwest passenger plane about to take off that was carrying 128 people on board. That's really scary. That was Sam Bronco reporting. The JetBlue flight arrived safely at Boston Logan Airport. The Southwest flight took off for Orlando just a few minutes after that runway incident. Coming up, the investigation continues into a deadly hit and run in Johnston County. The new images into the newsroom of the vehicle possibly involved. And a major rescue in Nigeria years after hundreds of schoolgirls were abducted by Boko Haram. For news, tra traffic and weather of the day, make sure to download the WRL News app. The Highway Patrol has released a new picture of the vehicle they believe may have been involved in a deadly hit and run in Johnston County. Evidence at the scene suggests it was a dark 2019 Jeep Wrangler JL, similar to the one in this picture with right front damage to the headlight area. The accident happened Tuesday night just before 10 p.m. on Old Stage Road north of Pear Ridge Road and Willow Spring. Jennifer Lee Penn died as a result of her injuries. And sad news this afternoon, Grammy award-winning Christian singer Mandisa has passed away. According to K-Love Radio, she died yesterday in her Nashville home. She finished in the top 10 on season five of American Idol and went on to release her debut album, True Beauty, in 2007. Mandisa Hundley was 47 years old. Her cause of death has not been released. Well, people in Australia are mourning after the mass stabbing attack at Sydney's Bondi Junction Shopping Center. As the mall reopened, people are bringing flowers and paying their respects for the six people who died last weekend. Visitors reflected and grieved together. Though the mall has high security now, many shops stayed closed to allow Australians to participate in Community Reflection Day. Well, the Nigerian army says it has rescued one of the missing Tubak schoolgirls abducted by militant Islamic group Boko Haram a decade ago. Lydia Simon was rescued along with her three children by troops conducting an operation in the northern Borno state. The army says she's five months pregnant. In 2014, nearly 300 schoolgirls were abducted by Boko Haram. Since then, more than 100 have regained their freedom. <laughs> Taylor Swift pulled off the ultimate surprise for eager fans awaiting today's big album release. Why Swifties are likely floating on cloud nine today. Also from classrooms to jobs, artificial intelligence is everywhere you look. But it's one thing computers can't replace, Olympic athletes. How the IOC is planning to incorporate the technology into the summer games. Welcome back. You're looking live at the WRL Azalea Gardens. Remember, the gardens are open from dawn to dusk. You're welcome to come by and walk through it. You can see a family having a picnic right there on the lawn. You're always welcome. Thank you for watching WRL News, available on Spectrum and the WRL app on your TV or streaming device. Happening this weekend, people will be flexing their muscles and strength to help Special Olympics North Carolina. The annual plane pull is happening at RDU International tomorrow. Seven-person team will compete to see which team can pull a 50,000 pound aircraft 25 feet the fastest. This event regularly raises more than $100,000 for Special Olympics North Carolina with each team raising about $1,000 each. The plane pull is happening tomorrow morning at the tarmac at the UPS terminal. That's near gate four. The reigning champs are the officers with the Nightdale Police Department. We are 98 days away from the opening ceremony for the 2024 Summer Games in Paris. And the International Olympic Committee is joining the rush to capitalize on ways to use AI in sports. The organizers of the Paris Games have already sparked controversy with their plans to use artificial intelligence for security at the Summer Olympics. They suggested a use of a video surveillance system that includes AI-powered cameras to flag potential security risks, such as abandoned packages or crowd surges. The 100 meters will always have to be run by an athlete, a human being. Therefore, we can concentrate on the potential of AI to support the athletes. 
The IOC plans to use the technology to protect athletes from online harassment and to help broadcasters improve the viewing experience for people watching from home. And NBC and Peacock will air unprecedented Olympic coverage, including daytime live broadcasts of swimming, gymnastics and track and field finals. WRL's Liz McLaughlin will be in Paris bringing you live coverage. Watch all the action here on WRL starting July 26th. Well, Cumberland County students, families, and staff celebrated the 40th annual very special arts festival last night. You see it right here. It's a chance for 500 exceptional children in Cumberland County schools to take the stage and shine. This event has been happening for 40 years, and WRL's Gilbert Bays has served as the massive ceremony since the start. This year's theme was traveling around the world through the arts. The show included a tricycle ride at the Tour de France, imaginary pizza from Italy, and harmonica music. And more. Well, ultimately, it really does build their confidence and gives them the opportunity to show what they're doing in their classes and work with their teachers and just be able to come and work together. Oh, they look like they were having such a great time. <laughs> Organizers hope to include middle and high school student performers at next year's event. Oh, that's an amazing yeah. event. And speaking of event, there's mm -hmm. a lot going on this weekend. Hopefully rain is not going to disrupt those plans. Meteorologist Elizabeth Gardner with a look around town right now. We're dry for now. We are, but we are looking at the potential for thunderstorms this evening. So if you do have outdoor plans this evening, um, it, it may very well be that you'll have to deal with some scattered storms. Looking at Goldsboro, we're mostly sunny right now. A little bit of high, thin cloud cover. Same thing here in Apex. Chapel Hill's looking a little cloudier, courtesy of Top of the Hill Restaurant, and a good bit of cloud cover there in Fayetteville, too, where our newsroom is. Uh, so we're looking at the Triangle area westward and southward is uh, where we're looking at the best chance for severe storms. This is our level one risk. As you travel north and east, that uh, risk diminishes a little bit. We'll take another look at satellite and radar and what's happening with this uh, rain right now. We do have a line that's starting to develop down here in South Carolina, just to our south, just south of this warm front. So as this lifts northward. This is where we've got the juicy air that uh, would help to develop some thunderstorms. So once that warm front moves north of us, we're going to be in that same air mass, which could support some scattered thunderstorms. That's probably still going to take a little while since that front is still south in, uh, in South Carolina. So as we get through the afternoon, we'll see increasing sunshine, and that also helps to destabilize the atmosphere. We'll have that warm front lifting northward. Starting after 5 o'clock, we'll have the potential for some of these cells to start bubbling up, and they may come in in a line. Some of the uh, few the previous runs of our computer model had a line of thunderstorms moving through. This one has that line sort of bubbling up a little bit closer to the triangle. But the timeline remains the same. Anytime between 5 and 6 o'clock in our western counties, around 7 o'clock in our central counties, and between 8 and 9 o'clock there in our eastern counties. And moving on out. What you'll see is some brief heavy rain. We'll have some blustery winds. And some of those winds could reach up to 58 plus miles per hour. And that puts it in the severe criteria. After that, an isolated shower could happen all the way through mid night. Saturday's looking good. We'll see a mix of sun and clouds. There'll probably be some overcast periods. We should end up with some sunshine Saturday and temperatures in the mid 70s. Should be a really pleasant day to be outside. Could be some uh, evening showers down to the south. Jeff Hogan is uh, the uh, MC of the Tar Hill 10 miler over there in Chapel Hill. <clears throat> Everything kicks off at around 7 o'clock, 62 degrees at race start times and then into the mid 60s as the races are wrapping up. So that's not too bad. We will see increasing uh, rain chances as we get through the day on Sunday. It may be with us by the middle of the morning, but what I can tell you is that we're looking at rain developing in the south and then gradually lifting northward. So we will see increasing chances of rain from south to north during the day on Sunday. And that rain continues overnight Sunday night. So we'll see an increasing chance there on Sunday while Saturday is looking pretty dry for us. And as we take a look at the rainfall, we're probably going to be on the lighter side with this rain that we see this evening. But once we get into a Sunday afternoon into Monday morning, Morning. We're looking at anywhere from a half an inch to maybe an inch and a half. So uh, that's good news because we definitely could use some rain. It's fairly dry out. Once we get past Sunday, remember Sunday is going to be really chilly at 59. We start to warm things back up 60s and 70s for highs, but some chilly mornings with mid 40s to around 50 as you're headed out the door next week. All right. Thanks, Elizabeth. First, it was silver and corsets for Beyonce's Renaissance tour. Now it appears Cowboy Carter is good for Western styles. Coming up, the latest company to capitalize on the craze after the break. 
As we wrap things up, here's a look at a few of the headlines we're following today. The yeah, crews are searching for a missing boater on Harris Lake after two men out fishing crashed into a cement pole in the water. They were thrown from the boat. One of the boaters was pulled from the water alive and taken to the hospital. Wildlife officials are investigating the crash. And we're also following breaking news in Durham where a man was shot and killed at a shopping center. This all unfolded at Miami Boulevard and Raynor Street just after 10 o'clock this morning. First responders took the man to the hospital where he died. Police are still searching for the person responsible. The owner of Clyde Cooper's Barbecue is leaving downtown Raleigh and selling the space for nearly $3 million. In November, Debbie Holt told WREL she was looking to move the 4,700 square foot space out of downtown Raleigh because she felt downtown was being neglected. Clyde Cooper's Barbecue was founded in 1938. Taylor Swift's highly anticipated new album, The Tortured Poets Department, it dropped at midnight, but that's not all. At 2 o'clock this morning, Taylor released 15 more songs. That makes this a double album release. The surprise songs are part of what she calls the anthology. Swift says a music video for the song Fortnite featuring Post Malone will come out at 8 o'clock tonight. And Beyonce's new album is giving one iconic jeans brand a boost. Levi says it has seen a 20% increase in sales since the album dropped. The singer's hit country album contains the track Levi's Jeans featuring Post Malone. Beyonce has also posted several pics wearing denim on denim on denim that sent fans flocking to their stores and their website. The company has also changed its names on social media to Levi with two eyes to capitalize off the song. Dust off that jeans jacket. Yeah. Fostering talent, creating opportunities, and building a thriving community. That's the focus of a new business launched by Curtis Jackson, also known as 50 Cent. Band plays for Jackson joined officials in Shreveport, Louisiana Thursday for the celebration of G-Unit Studios. The arrival is set to significantly boost job opportunities and economic growth, sparking a new era of prosperity and creativity. The first non-scripted projects are expected to begin in July with scripted projects slated for January. Well, Serena Williams donned a motion capture suit for a top spin 2K25, bringing the tennis star serves and play style to the game. Top Spin 2K25 hits the court April 26th on stream, PlayStation, and Xbox consoles. Early access editions of the game are available to play on the 23rd. Our pet of the day is a three-year-old boy in search of his own human to help him burn off his energy. Frazier can be a little clumsy, so he might not fit well in a family with small children, but he does like other dogs. There's a reason Frazier is wearing ducky pajamas. Now, although the end of April, all adult, uh, through the end of April, all adult dogs adopted at SPCA Wake will go home with their very own personal pair of ducky pajamas. <laughs> it's called Dogs in Ducky Pajamas. For more information about Frazier and all other dogs in ducky pajamas looking for a home, you can visit spcawake.org. Love it. Well, I want you to take a look at this. Pinehurst Resort posting photos found from some disposable cameras discovered in the club storage. The cameras are from 2000. Now, despite being expired for 20 plus years, they were able to be developed. Pinehurst says 